and today we're making wild boar pulled pork. It's a little bit of experiment. We have an open. We don't know if it works, so stay tuned. Can you make pulled pork using wild boar? Wild boar pulled boar? The question is that we are not sure, but just on those hills over there, the hunter killed a young boar and they brought me a shoulder and I thought, let's try to make it into pulled wild boar pulled pork. So we're gonna try to do that. I'm not sure it's gonna come out nice. I think it is. In my mind, it comes out amazing. So let's try. The prep for the wild boar takes two 12 hours marination. And this is done to firstly remove some of the excessive gaminess that is often found in wild boar, and the second to add depth and complexity of flavors. For the first 12 hours, place the wild boar into cold water and add half a glass of white wine vinegar and let it rest in the fridge. Once done, drain the water and placing the wild boar back into the pot, add the herbs. I like a mixture of rosemary, sage, bay leaves, juniper berries, and some garlic and then you drown it all with some good red wine. My preference is a young Merlot or Cabernet, and then back in the fridge. And after this last marination, it's time to get the proper cooking done. When making game, it's very important that you have nice herbs to kind of take away that wilderness taste from it. So we start with rosemary and check out how beautiful the rosemary in spring is. All these flowers, fantastic. Rosemary, we've got it. Now let's get some thyme. Ask me anything but time. A little bit of marjoram. Marjoram? How do you say this? Marjoram. Marjoram. A little bit of marjoram. And this is a great herb. Seldom used. But it's wonderful. Check it out. And now last thing. Let's get some sage. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Now we grab ourselves some sage. I love sage, so let's grab quite a bit of it. Okay, we got our herbs, let's go. Let's give this a quick rinse from the lion's mouth. All right. I mean, everything's pretty clean, but just a few rinse from dust. All right, shake it. Now we're gonna make our salt. We're gonna use the salt to give flavor to the wild boar. We break all the rosemary and all the herbs inside the little mixer. See, these are a pain in the butt to clean because they're so tiny little leaves, but well worth it because the flavor is fantastic. So I think at this point, we're gonna stop recording and I'm gonna ask my lovely wife to come and help me. Otherwise, we're gonna stay here for a very long time. So, see you in two minutes. Okay, and I nearly forgot, we're gonna get a fresh lemon. And we're gonna put some fresh lemon zest. So. And it's time to take this for a spin. And after a little bit of blending, this is our herbal salt. Smelling great. Now, let me show you our wild boar. So this has been marinating overnight in wine and herbs. And now we're gonna take it out. So this is our shoulders, it's been deboned. We'll just make sure that it lets, we let it drip. And we're just gonna pat it dry now. Start off with our first layer of herbal salt. And we gotta be abundant here because with a piece of meat this big, you need a lot of flavors to see through. Turn them, same on this side. But you know, we're missing one thing, we're missing garlic. So we're gonna take one clove of elephant garlic, peel it, and we're gonna blend it with the leftover of our herbal salt. And we finish off with a little garlic, salty, herbaliness. And the aromas coming from this, are incredible. Everything just picked from the plant. I mean, can't get any better than this. So now the thinking is, how are we gonna get all the fat in the wild boar 
to be able to create that kind of pulled pork effect. As we all know, to make pulled pork, you render down the fat and all the collagen, 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 you know what I'm talking about, goes inside the meat, it pulls apart. The wild boar, because it's kind of roaming and foraging in the woods, it's a lean meat, so we need to add fat. And we thought, pancetta? Without pancetta. So we're gonna slice this really thinly, we're gonna put it in the middle, and then we're gonna roll it up. So let's go. We're gonna make slices like this. And we're gonna use them to add moisture to our wild boar. Our pancetta has been sliced, so we turn around. And now we start packing our pancetta in the middle. And according to our plan, this is going to give enough moisture, enough fat to be able to create pulled wild boar pork belly. No, what? Pulled, pulled boar, pulled boar pork. Yeah, pulled? No pork. No pulled pork. Boar. But you know what I'm talking about. Pulled boar. Or pulled wild pork. Pulled wild boar. Pulled wild boar. So we roll this. Uh, my dad is going to help me putting this into shape. So let's start from here, dad. And of course, we didn't manage to record correctly. But anyway, here is all rolled up with punch it on the top. You can see it's dripping as it's cooking. Okay, come here. We put water in the tray. This is going to help when the fat comes down or any liquid so it doesn't smoke up. It's just going to go in the water and it also helps to add humidity to our oven. So we take this directly on the grates, not on a tray. So it's been about three hours and this is smelling really, really nice. We just measure the internal temperature and it's around 70 degrees. So my thinking now is that this is still quite juicy and all the juices that I wanted to get rid of because I think they might have been a bit gamey, I think they've been dropped off. So I'm gonna finish cooking this until it reaches 93 or 94 degrees Celsius. Woo, there we are. Wrapped up, cover it like this. Again. And I'm really optimistic about this because the smell is great. You can smell all the herbs. So I'm very hopeful that we can get some pulled meat out of this. So into the oven, probably, I don't know, two, three more hours. But anyway, we cook to temperature, not to time. Finally, we get to unwrap this. Uh, let me tell you what happened yesterday. So the plan was to have it for dinner. Dinner came, temperature didn't. So we said, okay, let's just have a late dinner. Then it got pretty late and we still didn't get to temperature. So what we thought is, let's still keep it in the oven, let's lower the oven and kind of mimic uh, kind of like a super, super, super slow cook. So that's what we did and this morning we put it up again to 120 and we finished cooking to temperature to 92 degrees internal. So obviously we cooked it for, I don't know, 12 hours, 13 hours, something a bit crazy. So don't know how it's gonna turn out, but let's make it, let's come closer. <laughs> the dog is happy, clearly smelling nice. Okay, we're doing this together. Smelling really lovely. Okay. Looks, feels really tender. Step one, let's cut the twine we use to keep all this together. Let's start from here, okay? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Look at this. Look at this, it's working, it worked. Ah, oh, look, it looks amazing. <laughs> okay, now we need to taste it. We need to make sure it tastes nice. Okay, let's, let's give this a shot. Mama, hmm? mama is a professional. She's had many wild porks in the past, but never pulled pork, right? Sajamo? Mm -hmm. 
Uh -huh. Dai, assaggia. No, non è buono. Mm. It's so good. Buono. Buonissimo. Guys. Oh, I can't believe we did it. I'm not sure how easy it is to find wild boar where you're from. But if you do, or if you find a crazy place that sells it, you gotta try it. So good. Oh. Papa, you gotta try it. Buon appetito.